The second scenario I wanted to cover is something a bit more advanced, and that is, um, yeah, you're working with a team, and at one point you clone the repo, the next day you come to the office, and you realize that somebody over the weekend has committed a 600 meg single file, or has committed a database dump that is, you know, 80 megs, and everybody has to download it now. And it's one of the scenarios that happens all the times, and it generally it would get, if you don't know the solution, it, it can get quite frustrating on how to solve it. So I will teach you how to solve these sort of problems where there's one or two files that snuck in and you want to make sure you remove them. Before I do that, I need to tell you a little bit about what Rebase is. Who, who here already knows about Rebase? Just so I get that. Okay. Okay. 15%. So if you don't mind, guys, I'm going to go through what the rebase is and, and we then add on top of it. At the very basic level, a rebase is a way to replay commits one by one on top of a branch. Remember that uh, the commit object contains the identifier of the father. That means that when you are replaying commits one by one on top of a branch, you're changing the father, you're changing the commit. So replaying commits on top of a certain different branch means rewriting the commits. That's why the rebase operation has to be done carefully, because whenever you rewrite commits IDs, your colleagues might not be happy about it. So that's the basic of rebase. Um, rebase has another functionality, which is the one that we will be using. And that is um, rebase allows you to replay commits one by one but then deciding what to do interactively with them. So some changes you might want to skip, some changes you might want to you know, squash into the previous commit, some changes you might want to just, just change the commit message. So an interactive rebase allows you to replay commits one by one, deciding interactively what to do with each of them. And in this case, uh, the one about where somebody committed a binary file, that's exactly what we want to do. So let me show you how that works. Ah, see, console time. For this uh, scenario, I've created a branch. So I can list the branches with git branch, by the way. And, and I created the branch binary stack. So I'm going to do checkout binary stack. This will switch my local current working directory to that specific branch. And if you see, and I show you the, contain, the list of this, of this folder, there's a file called Chewbacca. So Somebody <laughs> has committed an image. Imagine that this is a 600 meg ISO or it's a database dump. And the problem is this hasn't been done in the last commit. Otherwise, we could just use commit amend or reset, as I showed you. Somebody <coughs> has done it last week. And now there's a commit, like, I don't know, 10 commits ago, that contains a binary. And I want to remove it. This is what I want to show you how to do. First, let's identify at which commit that guy has inserted the binary. So you remember, I go it long-winded. So I have git log, num start, dash dash decorate. And you can scroll all the commits and see all the files. At one point, hey, that's the one. There's, this is where that guy, hey, it's me, <laughs> has added that file. And that's the identifier. OK, just copy some of these name numbers. OK. So we know that it was at the episode 6 commit, OK? All right. So if I go see all those numbers a bit shorter. Now, let's do this. Let's rewrite the history of this branch. Replay it, stop at that commit, change that commit, remove that file, and move forward. This is what an interactive rebase allows you to do. Now, just for the sake of using that init tag that we created at the beginning, you remember we created a, an initial tag? Let's uh, replay all the commits from the beginning using that tag. So the way we do it is this, git. I'm going to move it up so that you guys in the back see it. Git rebase interactive initial. This will say, OK, you want to replay all the commits from where? Ah, from that commit, which I have a reference to, which is called initial. This will open an editor where Git will ask me, OK, so I will replay these commits, but what do you want to do? What do you want me to do with them? And the default is pick. So what the pick means is 
replay the commit as it is, don't do any change. You have uh, quite a few choice. As I showed you before, you can choose to squash the commit. That means keep the change but put it into the previous commit. You can edit the commit and you can reward just the commit message. You can, um, I don't know what I'm clicking. I look at my screen, okay. So the one that we, we remember, we wanted to rewrite the episode six one, right? So let me change this to edit. So Git will look at our, the rebase operation. We look at our list and say, replay all the commits and say, hey, actually he wants to edit this. So I will stop my replaying my commits and put you at that commit. So I will save it and quit. And uh, yeah, see, Git says, okay, I stopped exactly that commit. Now you tell me what you want to do with it. Let's see if that's true. So git status. Yeah, so we are in a rebase in progress. And I want to just tell you something about this. So as you can see, right now we are not in the master branch anymore. We are in a state that somebody, it's very scary when you see it, if you, if you don't know what's happening. It, we are in a state called detached head. So we're actually not at the end of a branch, not at the last change in our branch. We're just at pointing our working directory at a random commit. So, but we're just pointing at the commit. We can undo, do whatever we want with it. So what we want to do is rename the file, right? Uh, actually, we want to remove the file. So the file is here. You now at this time in the project, there were only two files. So I can imagine there's this, this release file that it's important I keep it, but I want to remove it from the repository. So there's a command. So if you just want to remove a file and also remove it from your local folder, you can do just git rm. If you want to remove the file from the repository, but keep the file locally in your working directory, you can add cached. So you want to remove the file just from the repository. So we add cached. Now, as you can see, there's a change that we have scheduled. The change that we scheduled, we have scheduled an operation to delete the file, but the file is still there on track. Now, if you want to back it up, we can just move it up. I'll move it to the, my desktop. Actually, move it to my bad desktop. Now, Git uh, is ready to do this commit where I will remove the file. But you remember, I'm, re I'm in the middle of replaying all my commits, so I don't want to just commit this. I want to amend this commit I'm on right now. So that's why I just need to type the amend command that we saw before. So I do git commit minus amend minus a minus c. Actually, I don't, I don't even need to. Uh, let me just look it up if I need uh, an extra thing. Yeah, I just want to reuse um, the, um, the commit message. I can just do it this way. So I want to amend the, that commit, just to save this commit message as it was. And now if you notice, the commit ID of that commit has changed because we have rewritten it. And uh, the, con the contents of that commit do not contain that file anymore. But now we're stuck at that point, And now we want to replay the history starting from this commit. The way to do it. Git will tell us if you do git status. Look, you're in the middle of a rebase. When you're done, type git rebase continue. If we do that, git will replay the rest of the history and we have removed that file from our history. So let me prove it to you. I do git ll. You remember, it's my short version to see all the list of commits. Episode 6 had a binary file. That binary file doesn't exist. But there's something you need to know, and that is we have rewritten all the following commits because every commit contains the ID of the parent. So we have rewritten these entire branch IDs starting from that commit. That is why, once we're done doing this, you have to tell your, your colleagues, guys, I have removed this 600 max file you have to reclone the repo or you have to reset hard at that commit and then do a pull because all their commit IDs now are changed. So this is the pain of a distributed version control system. And hopefully these kind of mistakes don't happen often, but when they do, you need to ask all your team to move back history and repull 
Otherwise, they will have conflicts and you will have a bigger headaches to, to solve. Okay, so let's see what I have next for you. This was the section on cleaning up. I have a note for you before we proceed. So what I showed you is uh, that you can rewrite history and edit live a commit in the middle of the history. But if you, for example, for three months have been com committing dumps of your repository into your repo, or if you have been adding images to it and uh, now you want to clean it up, a simple rebase is not enough. You have too many commits, too many things to go through. So for more complex rewriting and clean cleanup, you can use a git command called git filter branch. It's quite low level and slightly complex to use. Alternatively, there's this um, tool written in Scala by yeah, one of the git contributors. It's called the BFG Repo Cleaner, it's written in Scala. And it, may, it gives you a slightly um, more user-friendly UI to do uh, major changes and clean up to your repository. So if you have to polish your repository in a slightly more complex and, and heavy duty way, have a look at BFG Repo Cleaner.